All right, we are getting started here, everyone. Thank you for joining. We are at about four past, so in just a moment, we will get our call kicked off. Again, thank you, everybody, for uh, coming out to see us today, Friday, uh, before the holiday. We're enjoying some lunchtime, and we're going to get uh, an opportunity to learn some things. So fantastic. I will be monitoring your chat. My name is Emily and I'm helping produce this. So if you've got any questions, make sure to use the QA section down at the bottom. You can also use the chat function if there's anything else that comes up and uh, we'll go ahead and get this started. So definitely, again, wanna welcome everyone today. Thank you for joining. And it is my absolute pleasure to join is or to introduce Israel Perez. Uh, Israel is a well-versed IT professional with 15 years experience in different roles of the software development life cycle. He's served as a developer, technical lead, architect, quality assurance, and test automation engineer, and has had the opportunity of being a freelance consultant in process, business, and enterprise architecture, analysis, and improvement. Thanks to the skills and experience acquired through all of these different roles, he is a true believer in the idea that human fulfillment should include the arts, sports, science, and spirituality, as well as creativity, health, rational thinking, and human well-being. Israel enjoys sharing his knowledge with others and getting new ideas, perspectives, and opinions from all sources. Today, we're going to talk about the art of showing off, which is fantastic. I know I'm very looking forward to this very much. So please make sure to type all of your questions into the QA section of Zoom. And at the end of the presentation, we'll take a couple minutes to go over and answer any questions that you might have. Now, it is my absolute honor and pleasure to turn the floor over to Israel to get started. Thank you so much, Emily. Um, once again, welcome everyone to, to this talk. Uh, I'm very happy to have the opportunity of bringing you this information today. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Improving for giving us the, uh, well, for providing us with this uh, digital form uh, to reach as much, people, as much people as we can. And obviously, thanks for the people that's uh, investing a bit of time in, uh, uh, in hearing this. Hopefully, uh, you will get uh, Good information that might uh, that may help you in the future with uh, with some situations that are common to all of us. So, what we will uh, what will we be talking about today? Um, first of all, uh, we most probably uh, felt uh, feel have felt at least once like awkward about compliments, or maybe uh, we feel uh, uncomfortable with uh, promoting our ideas. Or maybe uh, we want to suggest a, a new course of action, but, but we are not really sure if the uh, ideas we have uh, will, will be well received. Um, or maybe uh, what we are thinking about is um, um, our efforts might be a bit overlooked, like they are not being considered as much as we, uh, as we think they should. Or maybe we get little, or we, we might think we get little or no tangible benefit at all uh, from the hard work we do. Uh, so the purpose of this is to have a perspective and tools. Uh, that's the reason why this is uh, uh, also about tools and tips to increase positive awareness on our work. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much what, uh, about the introduction. So let's just, let's jump right into it. talk about first is what I call the four no's. What exactly are the four no's? Well, the four no's are four things you should know about, which is know about yourself, know about your knowledge, know about others, and know about your environment. So let's start with how we can start thinking about knowing others or ourselves. You have to frame your own 
and others roles when interacting with each other. It might seem a, a, a bit obvious and, uh, and then again, if you rethink it, then it might become a bit uh, overwhelming because as you might know, and the most probably have experience in a lot of situations, interacting with, uh, with people might become uh, a bit tough because uh, we people are com uh, complicated and complex uh, to interact with. So one good idea would be to have a framing tool that helps us uh, do a quick and very concise analysis of, of what uh, of the interaction and the the way it, it is uh, happening right now, uh, right in the in the moment. So what do we have that uh, what do we have for for that purpose? Well, we have the parent adult child framework. What is this framework about? Well, I've already mentioned that uh, humans are complex. Uh, we have we people have a lot of uh, a wide uh, range of emotions and perspectives and positions and ideas and ways to 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 handle situations um so it would be very difficult to think well what is these people trying to uh, to express and how and how is that person that i'm talking to feeling it might be very difficult to to come to a conclusion because most of the times you will need that information right when you are talking to people so the purpose of this uh, of this uh, framing tool is to give you a very quick and easy way to identify the position of the of, of the people you are talking to. We we all uh, place uh, ourselves in one of these three different roles uh, in every, in every communication. We might be uh, positioning ourselves as parents, we might be uh, representing ourselves as adults, or maybe we might present ourselves as children, okay? Well, what, what exactly does this mean? When we are being parents, we can um, be representing one of two different uh, parent types. Like for example, a critical parent. Critical parents usually uh, express themselves as uh, with criticism, with uh, maybe even uh, ironically, like uh, pointing out to, uh, to mistakes and to defects on people or, uh, or the work or uh, the, the things that are happening around them. So uh, a critical parent uh, might usually uh, feel like, a, like an angry person. On the other hand, uh, and contrary to that, we have the nourishing parents, which are like uh, those kind of parents that um, like try to nourish you, uh, try to uh, make you feel comfortable when you feel uh, like sad or maybe confused. They may they may also be uh, feel like uh, sad when you uh, or. Uh, embarrassed uh, when you make a mistake and uh, they feel like they have to protect you. So that's the reason why uh, we have these uh, these little faces in nourishing. They have they can be also they can also feel proud about you. For example, when they when you do something they like and you and they feel like they have been like promoting you. So that's the parent uh, the parent role uh, some people may uh, may express. The second role we can. Uh, we can uh, express in is the is the adult role. Adults, uh, in contrast with parents, don't express themselves up as uh, as emotional persons. Adults mainly interact with other adults, sharing information, sharing facts, uh, pointing to uh, to real things. They they don't express like what they feel, they just express what they know, okay? That's a very important thing because in an ideal world, le uh, all uh, labor and work relationships should mainly be uh, through an adult perspective, okay? But we know, uh, obviously, that uh, we can't be adults all the time, so uh, it is also important to, to know the rest of the, of the roles we can 
uh, we can express through. So that's uh, how we go to how we get to children. Uh, there are three types, three main types of children we can uh, express through. We can represent uh, a cheerful child, which uh, is the kind of children that uh, that likes to make jokes, that uh, uh, laughs at jokes. Uh, it's kind of playful. Is uh, happy about the, the things they express. Okay. We also have rebellious kids. Um, in these <laughs> rebellious children. Uh, in contrast with the uh, cheerful children, are children that like to annoy other people. Okay, uh, this is like, uh, for example, a real children can also uh, make a joke, but it, but that joke might be uh, a little ha harmful. For example, um, and they can also like try to um, do some things that uh, uh, to express themselves. In such a way that the the children uh, doesn't uh, doesn't get the consequences of their acts. Okay, and finally we have uh, passive children. Passive children are usually uh, uh, ways to express like um, with uh, a bit of uh, shame or maybe uh, when we feel uh, social uh, social anxiety. Or maybe we feel like insecure or maybe sad, and we need and, and we feel like we need uh, someone that uh, cares about us. Uh, all those related uh, emotions. Okay. I think it is kind of easy to identify with one of these uh, three different roles and their subtypes, and that's the reason why this this framework is so uh, helpful for everyone. I think it is very easy to identify the, the uh, and to try to classify the people we interact with in so, in some of these uh, in some of these roles, and also to identify uh, identify ourselves and how we uh, express to uh, to the others. But more important than identifying the role itself is how these roles interact with each other, because, for example. Critical parents are usually in, in, in search for rebellious children to, uh, uh, to complain about or, or maybe to correct uh, or to come into and reduce them to passive children. So uh, critical parents uh, and rebellious children get kind of away <laughs> uh, along, but they create a uh, complementary negative uh, interaction. Yeah, they do complement, but the, the, the interaction will be mainly uh, hurtful for their relationship uh, as a whole and the communication. So that's the reason why uh, some of these uh, combinations uh, are better suited for uh, effective communication. I just said at the beginning, and when I mentioned about adults, that adults get well along, get well along with other adults. That means that, for example, if a children uh, wants to uh, make a joke uh, in front of a person that expresses themselves as adults, the children might feel uh, like frustrated because maybe the children don't, uh, don't get back. Uh, a laugh for a joke, but they just get a confirmation or a face of awkwardness. So that's the reason why it is important to identify the others and our own position. Because effective uh, relationships, like for example, two uh, cheerful children get well along. To reveal those children, make a mess for, for each other. Two passive children, may don't even get at all because they don't they will not even start the communication uh a nourishing parent may get well along with a with a passive children but in in terms of uh, work working and professional relationships may not be as positive as it might be for example uh, becoming a a novel, a novel for, uh, from both sides. So uh, the first thing you might want to try is to uh, exercise yourself trying to identify 
you and the other people you, knew, you interact with and try to frame them into, into these rules. And another thing you can do is also, uh, which is an exercise I, I have done in, in some workshops, is to try to identify these roles in, uh, in movies, in series, in whatever you, uh, uh, multimedia content you see. You may also uh, try to identify what, uh, what role is anyone uh, expressing through. I myself, for example, in this talk and most talks, uh, uh, the people who give these kind of talks will most probably be expressing themselves as others. Okay. So now let's go forward. And now let's talk about environments. You have to frame your environment's organizational structure and leadership style. How can we do this? Well, the most the, there are two very common organizational structures that have uh, implications on the way we can uh, interact with other teams. These two organizational structures are hierarchical structures and matrix-like or matrix-style uh, structures. What are they about? Hierarchical uh, structures are based on responsibility levels. They use split teams based on purpose or field uh, or field of knowledge. Like for example, you have an IT department, you have a sales department, you have a marketing department. So they uh, they are split that uh, teams are split that. Uh, the communication channels are also usually hierarchical, meaning that 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 for example, when you want to request something to a different department, you have to ask it for uh, to your leader or your uh, manager, and then that manager has to formally ask uh, for the for the resources or the help you need to other team to other teams manage, uh, managers. And so that's more or less what uh, hierarchical communication means. And we usually uh, the uh, hierarchical uh, structures usually favor autocratic decision taking, which means that, uh, and that's the reason why they uh, these uh, structures are uh, based on responsibility levels, because there's someone responsible of taking decisions. So in this case, when you are not a decision maker, a decision taker, sorry, you uh, the the most you can do uh, for decision taking is to express uh, your opinion or your position, or your professional position about uh, any particular subject. <clears throat> now, what are metrics like uh, structures? Well, they are based on processes, roles, and responsibilities. Uh, they uh, favor multidisciplinary uh, autonomous teams. They, they have open communication channels across teams. And democratic decision taking is uh, what's being favored in this case. What um, what this implies is that, for example, uh, well, IT uh, teams are very familiar with this structure because agile uh, frameworks and uh, methodologies favor a lot of the democratic decision taking. Like, for example, uh, with the retrospectives that. Uh, are open channels for anyone to, to express not only uh, problems, but also solutions. And for example, when you're pointing uh, story, uh, the complexity of the work, all the team is taken into account to understand the complexity. Not only uh, one manager is asked about how complex a task will be, but the team as a whole uh, takes the responsibility of uh, understanding and fulfilling the uh, the requests. Okay. So one important thing to remember is that most organizations use a hybrid organizational model. The most democratic uh, positions and democratic uh, philosophy sounds very good in uh, in theory, but it might be it might become very difficult. Uh, to take decisions once you get to strategic levels. Because when you, uh, as uh, working uh, hands for, uh, for most of our, our organizations, we are very used to um, do the things, uh, but not taking decisions or taking, 
or defining paths or courses of action for a for a big number of um, for a huge number of persons. So at some point, decision takers organ organize themselves as hierarchical uh, as a hierarchical structure. So you don't have to uh, discuss and get to an agreement with a lot of people with uh, who uh, that because that's a process that might take a lot of time and that a lot, and a lot of effort that may that may uh, slow the process of uh, taking a course of action <clears throat> so um, long story short you have to identify both your team and your and the organization wide structure models so you can uh, choose the way you can communicate with teammates and other teams. Now, framing about uh, our expertise is the last thing we, we were missing from the four notes. And as a framing tool for the, the things we know, we can use the, uh, these three concepts, fact, professional position, and opinion. Facts first, and that may that may sound like like obvious are proven and mostly unquestionable uh, pieces of information. Like for example, uh, the world population is uh, around seven dot uh, eight hundred and thirty seven million uh, billion people. Sorry. So that's a fact. Okay. In contrast, professional position is based on your experience and your uh, acquired knowledge. Like for example, the your uh, academic preparation or uh, whatever you have studied. Uh, and and it, it takes the form like, for example, uh, social media Social media is useful for me, uh, as a marketing tool or uh, uh, this, uh, software design patterns are, uh, are a good practice. Okay, That's, those are not exactly facts in the sense that the way we construct those uh, those uh, phrases and the way we express about them uh, about them is based on what we have done as professionals of our own areas. They, uh, this knowledge doesn't have the uh, the weight as a fact that has been proven and has uh, evidence and, and solid evidence uh, to to validate it, and it is most probably published in a in a recognized uh, resource, like for example, scientific uh, magazines or sites. Uh, but professional positions are also expressed uh, by our own professional experience. And finally, we have opinions, which are usually limited to our own beliefs and or lack of information. Uh, this happens when we, ma we um, are trying to, uh, are, when we are asked about um, a situation where we are not sure what exactly the course of action might be, or maybe we have heard of it, but we haven't ex uh, experienced it directly. So what is, uh, why is important to, to understand what uh, the weight of uh, of our knowledge through these uh, through these different concepts. Because if we are going to express an opinion, we have to clarify that we are making an opinion, and the, and that as an opinion, it can't be taken not as a fact nor a professional position. This has to do with man with expectation management. We have uh, to manage others' expectations based on how confident we can be about what uh, what we will say. If we will uh, express an opinion, we can't be as confident as uh, as we are being when expressing a fact. So we have to manage expectations that other people that the the people were expressing these ideas to is getting from this. <clears throat> okay, so. That's it about the four notes. So now we can just, uh, and with these uh, framing tools, we can just dive into the tips for specific scenarios. Scenario one, 
receiving compliments. Compliments are uh, might might seem like um oh like an always good thing, but there are people like uh, that feel uncomfortable when they are being complimented about what they do. <laughs> this mo this most probably has to do uh, sometimes with uh, the uh, with this idea of, of feeling that we are not exactly what they what the people think uh, we are. Uh, so there are a lot of ways to handle compliments, depending on what you want to do after the compliment and what and the way you, you want to express yourself. Like for example, you want to soften the compliment, you can make a joke about it. You want to inspire others about the compliment or share the compliment, then you can compliment back right, up, uh, right in the moment when you're being complimented. You want to reject the compliment, you can, you obviously thank the compliment, but explain why you are rejecting. And you want to reduce the compliment, you can also about what is missing on the on what you are being complimented about. Or you want to distribute the compliment, you can talk about team efforts. When this uh, when are all these uh, useful? When you want to soften, you might be uh, this is usually uh, the useful when you are being complimented like uh, for a person you are in charge of. Uh, so you don't, you want to uh, present yourself as, uh, as a humble person, then you can just soften the, the, the compliment. Inspiring is something uh, very useful in, in every case. So it is a very good way to, uh, to, to answer back uh, to, a, to a compliment that people is doing to you. And rejecting is useful when you're being complimented by some, because of something that maybe you didn't do, or you didn't do alone, or you didn't do it that way, or it wasn't uh, as difficult or as special as uh, some other people think. Okay, so, but in all cases of uh, compliment uh, of receiving compliments, you have to always say thank you. This might seem obvious, but it is, uh, it is important for us to remember that compliments are uh, always a good thing, so we can't just thank it. And even if you, if we don't want to, to, to do anything else with the compliment itself, okay, I, I think you is uh, a very good way to, uh, to express back from a compliment. Okay, let's see this then the next session there. Making improvement suggestions. When making suggestions, the, the, the problem with suggestions is that uh, uh, since they, they are expressed as, uh, as about things that are not exactly wrong, some people may not uh, be very interested in uh, improving what, what's being done and what somehow functions and works well in the present. So what we can do uh, is first identify what my suggestion is for. And then once we have identified the, the purpose, we have we we can frame the, the exposure of the of our idea as a matter of problem solution. You see, this is this, this is a, a a tiny trick. We are we are converting um, not a not problem or not so important uh, improvement or maybe it is important, but some people need to to feel the urgency of doing something to improve and that um, and we can get to to that feeling in the others presenting the the improvement as a solution to a to an existing problem no matter if it is not a solution <clears throat> and another good thing we can do is build a demo or a proof of concept in we might start doing the thing we want to uh, to do and to, to improve. And then we just can present it uh, as it would look in the real life. Because it is easier to say yes to something that's have, uh, have done, that uh, say yes to something that I have to imagine and that, and that I don't know if it will work or not. So a, a proof of concept will also help yourself 
identify possible uh, caveats or uh, difficulties that you may uh, find when uh, implementing the solution or the improvement you are proposing. Okay, let's jump to the next one. Highlighting a problem. Well, we have seen that uh, improvements might, uh, may be presented as problems. What when we have a real problem, we, uh, what we must do first is to identify the severity and impact in terms of, uh, of, the, of the problem itself. Uh, severity and impacts are uh, expressed as uh, time loss or risks or uh, economic losses or um, any other uh, um, client relationships. There are a lot of uh, values that the organizations uh, protect and uh, nourish. So whatever that affects these values and, uh, and benefits should uh, be taken into account when identifying severity and impact. And the other imp very important thing we have to uh, take into account is identifying stakeholders. Who who are we going? Who are we going to say uh, inform about the problem we identified? Well, most probably the most affected person, or in uh, as you remember, and this is a, a, a good example of identifying the uh, of how useful the uh, identifying this, the organizational structure is. If we cannot, if because of the, the organizational structure, we cannot take the idea to uh, directly to stakeholders, we have to identify who, who we have to inform about a problem. And then that person has a responsibility to take the, the responsibility to take the, uh, the problem to the, to the real stakeholders. But what is more important about highlighting a problem is raising your hand ASAP. It doesn't really matter. If, it, it doesn't really matter if you were the cause of that problem, but I can assure yourself that you will most probably uh, feel a lot worse if you don't express a problem uh, with uh, with enough time to, to solve it. So even when when we're the cause of a problem, we have to talk of the problems themselves. <clears throat> Okay, let's jump to the next one. Talking about achievements, okay. Um, this is for when uh, we have done something and maybe uh, we get a, uh, we reach a goal we wanted to, to reach and we want to, uh, to share and talk about it. How can we do this effectively and positively? Well, first of all, we, we need to identify the level of impact of our, of our contribution. Some uh, contributions may, may be like uh, just uh, focused on improving the uh, team's efforts. Some others uh, benefit the, the organization as a whole. Some others may uh, benefit just the, uh, our clients, but whatever uh, the, 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 the impact is, we have to identify it first. Then we have to condense and uh, condense information and create ex executive reports with it. Um, I won't be, I, I won't go into details about what an executive report is uh, because uh, it might take a, a whole uh, talk, this specific point. Uh, but, if, but what is important about this is we, must know how to do this because we are uh, very uh, related to, narr to narrative uh, ways of expression like uh, storytelling <laughs> whenever we want to, to talk about something we usually express it as a as an story but that's not useful for decision takers decision takers have to uh, receive da data and they have to receive it in a format that can be easily and quickly read uh, quickly read so it is important for all, for all of us to know and learn how to create executive reports. But another way to uh, talk about achievements is creating manuals, stories, or examples of what we have done. It is easier to share what, uh, what we have done if we help others take our, our work and use it for themselves. So it, it might not sound an, as an obvious way, but creating manuals on how to get a benefit from what we have done. It's also a way of talking about what we have done. 
And finally, uh, related to, to, the, to the last point is to socialize or invite others to participate on your ideas. Once you, for example, create a, the basis for, uh, for a new way or a new tool you want to implement, you can invite others to join. And if you have previously created manuals, stories, and examples on, uh, and all the related media, you can invite others to participate using that media. And in that way, even the people you are inviting to doesn't even have to really know that you are talking about your own achievements. And that also increases the, the, the value of your, of your contributions. So you get benefit from both, uh, from two different sides. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Documenting your experiences. Uh, documenting your experiences is, is not uh, always a thing that you have to do uh, for the team you are, uh, you are working with. You can also, for example, write a personal professional blog. Uh, you can also post on social media uh, or on professional social media. Uh, you can also record professional reels or short videos, or you can even prepare talks like this one. Uh, and that's the reason why at the beginning of this talk, I thank Improving for this, because this is also a good way of uh, documenting the, uh, the ideas and, and the experiences I have, in, I have had in the past. And it, all, it also shapes uh, ways of improvement, because when we, when we are in the need of explaining what we have done to others, we also may identify some ways we can improve what we have done before. <clears throat> the diagram you saw about the uh, parent adult uh, children framework is one that I used uh, like uh, a year and a half ago uh, for a different uh, for a different content and, and a workshop. So you you can see that the the, the process of documenting that workshop helped me. Uh, reuse the content and reuse it to, to bring and prepare this new content. So as with everything, you might, for example, have uh, designed a good way of uh, defining and formalizing processes for your area. Maybe you cannot share the process itself because of, uh, of uh, agreements that don't allow to share information. But you can talk about the way you designed it because that's something that is part of your professional value. So, uh, well, I have mentioned, uh, I have just mentioned uh, something important. You have to be very wise and sensitive uh, uh, and sensible about, about sensitive information. Whenever you're writing a blog or posting on professional social media or recording reels, be very, very careful on what you share on, on what, yeah, on what, you share to others because you might have heard uh, some experiences or maybe uh, cases in which people like take themselves in videos of uh, when they are inside important in inciting an important uh, meeting for example in which uh, economic facts are being discussed well that's uh, a very bad decision because that information is sensitive and is very protected and is very valuable for the organization. So you can talk about the processes of creation, of, of, of the way you create and learn the things, but you cannot talk about the things frequently. So be wise and select what can be uh, shared with others. <clears throat> and one good thing you, you also get from this is exposure. Now that we have uh, this hyper-connected uh, ex uh, personal experience with the world, exposure, uh, professional exposure is a very positive thing. We can also start using our exposure to get more benefits from the prison world. And let's now talk about harvesting benefits. First, we need to uh, remember what the possible benefits are 
from what we do. The most obvious one are economical benefits, which is uh, besides of our uh, paycheck, uh, we might also uh, be willing to get promotions or further assignments or productivity bonuses if they apply, or maybe over achievement rewards or commissions. So this is kind of the most obvious thing, but let's go to the next one. You might also be uh, thinking of professional benefits like learnings, experience, professional widening, exposure. Professional widening, uh, profile widening is uh, one thing that is becoming a, a, a trend in some organizations. It has been a trend in, in information, te information uh, technologies because profile widening allows a person to manage themselves and uh, to manage uh, themselves in different scenarios that they haven't uh, faced in the past. So it will be a very useful uh, perspective for all uh, the professional areas in the future, in the near future. So prepare yourself for that. For that. But we can also harvest a benefit by thinking of social or ethical contributions. Now we are hearing more and more about community give, uh, give backs. We also uh, uh, are uh, being pushed to improve the market themselves and the market itself in which we uh, participate. It is also being uh, a more and more uh, important subject to talk about economy or energy energy uh, efficiency. So uh, you also can start thinking how, what, can, what you do uh, benefits the, the efficiency of these resources. And we might also be thinking of labor conditions improvements, like for example, inclusion or equity or wellness, or uh, uh, even once again, uh, environment uh, or ecology. All those things might not feel like a personal benefit, but we have also to start thinking of social benefits as benefits for our own. So that's the reason why, I'm, why I am mentioning this, uh, because this may also uh, start creating a, an identity for what, we, uh, for what we do and the way we want to participate in the, in our in our activities, <clears throat> and finally, but uh, a bit obvious, but not but not uh, but not for that less important, is the benefit of professional relationships, and this is usually done through peer support. Well, but obviously, these benefits are all there, no matter. Uh, we try to get them or not, but it is better if our goals are previously defined because we might be uh, willing to focus on economical benefits, or maybe we are willing to uh, focus ourselves in social or ethical uh, contributions. So it is important to, to first define uh, the benefits we want to harvest because in that way we can uh, focus our efforts to get to those goals. And another uh, way of thinking about benefits is thinking, what if I weren't here? Um, you have to, uh, you, you, can, you can get a lot by answering yourself this question, but try to be honest with you. This doesn't have to be an exercise uh, that you uh, many need or want to share with others, uh, but it is a very good practice to, to, to think what if I weren't here? What would happen? Because if you, if you <coughs> if you answer yourself like, well, it might not do any difference at all. Maybe you are not contributing as much as you can or as you would like to. <clears throat> and something that might might be uh, might sound like a bit corny. Uh, a uh, very common uh, phrase, expect nothing, but aim for the best. 
because in the end, the the best way to uh, to benefit from something is to not put uh, very high expectations on the way, on the things we do, because more, because we are getting benefits from what from whatever we we do, but we most probably are not uh, being humble enough to accept that the benefits might not be as good as we want, but they are present. So it is important to, to feel and uh, embrace the benefits we get, no matter if they are not exactly what we were expecting. And last but not least, <clears throat> let's talk about uh, learning about additional useful tools. Uh, these are four, to four tools that I have uh, mentioned or even used during this talk. Like for example, expectation management. Uh, there are uh, courses, talks, and uh, a lot of content about this. You have seen uh, why this is important uh, because most of the contributions we uh, we do may may become overlooked if the expectations on the on the work uh, were not uh, realistic. Like for example, if you are asked to uh, build uh, twelve chairs a day, and you just manage to build one chair at uh, an hour, you will never get to the to the to the goal you are you are being imposed. But that doesn't mean that your effort is wrong or did, or that you are doing something bad. So that's the reason why expectation management is very important for the self promotion. <clears throat> The other thing that, that that's important is the talk framing and the idea framing. You have been, you uh, I have been uh, using that uh, that word a lot during this talk. Framing helps to narrow the way we uh, we express about the uh, about whatever we want to express. By framing, you leave uh, outside whatever that's not important for the idea we want to express. And just leave, uh, and you, we also use the frame itself as a way to uh, highlight whatever we want to, to express. Talk framing has a lot of shapes. The, the, uh, for example, I mentioned a, a, a common framing, which is problem solution. And I also use one at the beginning, which is the end whatever. Like for example, you most probably have uh, seen a lot of uh, uh, content that says like, the three worst movies of the 2022, the four more effective ways of handling your, your, your time. So uh, that, th those uh, ways of expressing ideas are, fra uh, are top framing uh, tools. There are also, there's also a lot of content about this, so you can just uh, go ahead and search for it. Idea abstraction. This is related to, to the uh, executive reports I mentioned. Um, once again, uh, uh, full subject on, it, on its own. There are a lot of, uh, of tools for this itself. So I, I will just leave it as something everyone has to, uh, should uh, learn about. <coughs> Sorry. And finally, narrative rhythm. Um, this might not seem like a, like a professional tool uh, for uh, every single area, but it actually is because you can also get a better result if you, you, if you use a defined narrative rhythm. Uh, this is more uh, probably most common for uh, storytelling or movies or all those sorts of uh, all those kind of, uh, types of media, but it is also, also useful uh, for a meeting that in, in which you will have to talk a lot. So there, uh, here are the tools uh, that uh, might be helpful for you. So search for content about this and try to learn them. And why are, are these tools important? Because the better and more plentiful our tools are, the bigger our confidence is. And yeah. I think that's pretty much all of it. I think we're mostly, we have mostly run out of time, but let's see if there's, there's any questions or comments.
Yeah, we have about six minutes left. I did not have any questions come through the Q&A section. You did a fantastic job. Uh, does anyone want to take a moment posting any last minute questions or letting us know anything before we head out for not just the day and the weekend, but probably the holiday season for many? Yeah, exactly. I think we can um, just leave the content here. Um, you can find me in, in, in LinkedIn by my uh, by my name itself, uh, Israel, Israel Perez. You can share, uh, share my name with you. Uh, Emily, if you can help me with that in the, in the chat or in the forum. Um, and if you have any questions or want to know about anything that we have discussed today, my uh, social media is open for everyone. So I think we can just close it here. Yep. And again, I just want to thank you for taking the time today to come speak to us. This is a fantastic topic. I know I learned several things. I think this is this is something, a presentation where everybody who attends will be able to find at least one thing to take away from. So thank you so much for giving your time and thank you everybody for joining. It is fantastic that we had so many people dedicated to learning something new over the lunch break. So as noted, you can find Israel on LinkedIn. Uh, we will also have this information um, from the chat posted from our improving LinkedIn account. And then have everybody have a happy and safe holiday season. Thanks, Emily. Thanks, everyone. Bye. See you.